Hello everyone, welcome back to Space Engineers, and today we are going to be building a 3D printer. Now, for our 3D printer, we are going to need just a few things. We're going to need some welders, we're going to need at least one rotor, we're going to need, for this version, we're just going to need one piston. And we're going to need some sort of, you know, control block that we can use to kind of control it. In this case, I'm going to be using an industrial cockpit. And then we're going to need some armor blocks, some conveyor tubes, and the second most important block next to our welders is we're going to need the projector or multiple projectors. I'll explain that one here in a second. And some sort of flat panel. It could be an armor block, a catwalk, or a window. So to start things off, we are going to need our welder's place. And I have this spot on the wall that will lead out to our cargo storage. And we're just going to place... We'll do a three by two printer. It's not a very big printer, but you can scale this up however you want and kind of whatever fits your use case. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these reinforced curved conveyors and I'm going to sit here and just going to place them on both sides. I know it's not really necessary, but redundancy and well, okay, maybe it looks a little bit nicer that way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place our armor blocks and in front of those and in front of our welders, this is a very important step because we're going to need something to keep our welders from printing, printing things and snagging up on them. We're going to put some sort of flat panel in front of our welders. In this case, I'm using windows. And if you look, just look, you can see the tips of the welders peeking out just through the panel. And with that, the actual welding part is done. Now let's get to the part where you project your blueprints. I'm going to take, you know, this armor block and we're going to go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. And then I'm going to place a piston on top of that. And then we're going to go ahead and reverse our piston. And while that's doing that, we'll go ahead and place our rotor. We'll detach the head of the rotor and add a small head. And what we'll do is we will wait for it to go. We're going to go down two blocks. And we're going to go over three. I think we go down one more. What we want is we want it to kind of roughly be around the center of our welding, kind of a welding cluster here. And the reason why I staggered this like this is I'm going to actually, actually place our cockpit right there. And that kind of gives it a little bit of clearance. Yeah. I like that. And then all that is left is our projector. And we're going to place one right up here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to build a frame around it. We'll go ahead and do just a, a two by frame for now. And there we go. There is That is our 3D printer in a nutshell. Now, it's kind of a couple of different notes on 3d printers and that is if you're going to be 3d printing small grid you need to have small grid projectors hence why we use the we we kind of rotor down and you know and we added the small grid projector if you're going to be 3d printing large grid you need a large grid projector so the whole stepping down with the rotor not necessary with a large grid now one kind of Last pro tip before we kind of get things started is if you're going to find yourself printing a lot of the same things, whether it be drones, ships, fighters, it's good to keep your blueprints on one projector. And if you're going to be printing something else, add another projector. Because it's just going to be, it helps things go smoother. 
you allows you to swap between two or three different builds. It's just easier that way. Now, let's go ahead and hop into our cockpit and let's go ahead and get ourselves set up with one of our blueprints. All right, now that we're inside of our industrial cockpit and I already kind of pulled the piston back, so we're sitting at our farthest point. We're going to need to now load our blueprints. And to do that, we, we are going to hit K. And we're going to find our projector block. And right where here, where it says blueprints, we are going to select that. And it will open up our blueprint menu. Now, from here, we're going to find the blueprint that we want to print. In this case, I'm going to be printing... Small grid 1465 because I'm terrible at naming things. So we're going to go ahead and hit copy to clipboard. Now I'm going to get a couple warnings here because one, there's a block that it doesn't quite understand and it's from a mod that won't affect it. But if you have a mod and it's not supported in the game you're in, you'll get this warning that some blocks are just not available. We're going to ignore that hit yes. And then multiple grids are not supported. Only the largest grid will be used. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, with that, if you notice, our menus changed a little bit. And we have this nice little breakdown of kind of what everything we have. And as you also notice, our Our uh, print isn't exactly uh, sitting straight. So what we are going to do is we are going to adjust it. And I hope we have gave ourselves enough clearance here. To do that, we are going to go to our back to our projector. And we are going to only be messing with our offsets for now. Check our horizontal offsets. Looks like that is right there. Our vertical offsets. Ooh, looks like that's affecting our forward and back. And our forward should be that. We're going to pop out, check to see where we're at. That's about where we need to be. It looks like I need to be back a couple more or forward a couple more. Uh, da, 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 vertical. That's oh, we're not touching now. And oh, there's a there's a camera there. So let's go ahead and do. You know what? That camera isn't super high priority for me to print so we're just going to back that off just by one more 11 so we're at 10. and if you see kind of this block kind of fill up it means that we can print that and because we can print that this thing is ready to be printed so what we are going to do one last setting we're going to need with our projector for is because we want to keep our print, we're going to scroll down and hit keep projection. And to make things easier on us, we're going to go only printable. If you look, it pretty much deletes everything but this block. So for now, we're going to go back into our K menu. We're going to select all of our welders and we're going to group them up as our welders. And we're then going to grab everything and group them up as our 3D printer. Oop. Hold the shift down a little too long on that one. 3D printer. We'll go to our G menu. Go to our groups. 3D printer. Toggle on and off. Welders. Toggle on and off. And we'll go back to our piston. We are going to add a reverse. Oh, 
And we're going to go back into our K menu, go back to all of our welders. And what we need to do is click help others. This way, if they are done welding their block, they will help other welders weld their blocks. And then we're going to go back to our piston. We're going to reverse it for now. We'll set our speed at point three. We're going to turn on our welders. Actually, we can sit here and do that. We can turn our on our welders, reverse, and we should start seeing it print everything out. Now it will take some time and yes, it, we may have some issues with, um, if you, if you're printing it too fast, you may have some issues where certain blocks don't get printed, but that's kind of where optimizing your blueprints for 3d printing really kind of helps making sure that everything this connects up like it's supposed to like for now, the wheels won't be placed. I may have to go in there and manually re add the wheels because I didn't quite optimize this specific blueprint or 3d printing. But as you look, it's just going to sit here print everything out. And like this, we're going to use some magic and just kind of fast forward ourselves through this. Now that our prince is done, there is one thing we do need to do that I already did. And that was I went in, selected all of our tires and hit add wheel. Now I did make a couple of adjustments to the printer while everything was kind of going. And that first one is I took our piston and I increased the speed to point one. I felt that 0 0.03 was just a little too slow for what we need. Second, I went ahead and added inertial tensors to both the pistons and the rotors. And lastly, I added a few gyroscopes on override to sit here and kind of help smooth things out. If you don't know how to override your gyroscopes, you're going to go and yeah, some of these are for the vehicle. You're going to select the gyroscope and you're going to hit this override controls now. Or and you could do fun things with this, such as make auto rollovers, but that's, that's something different entirely. In this case, I'm just kind of trying to resist the change of movement. So I just left them all at zero. Now, with all of that, our print is done and we can actually go in and, oh, yep, everything's off. Everything is off. We can actually go in and take our grinder here and actually just grind down our support studs and drive away. Now, a couple of things to kind of note is you can kind of see, I didn't really leave myself a lot of room here to kind of get this vehicle out. This can kind of be fixed by two things. I can either print the vehicle sideways and just drive out. Or I can add some sort of articulation at the base of the of my printer arm 
that kind of rotates the vehicle around to uh, so I can just drop it off where it's easier to drive out. I didn't really plan on that when I kind of designed this basic one. Uh, other princess that I've done, that's typically what I do, is just have some sort of articulation in there that kind of keeps the system from kind of having to do like a 25-point turn to kind of get things out. Another thing you can kind of do is using pistons, rotors, you can add movement into your welders to essentially make a much larger uh, welding platform. And that's how you would scale this up to large grid ships without having to have like thousands of welders going off at one time. You could also have thousands of welders going off at one time, but that is how you would do it. So many different tricks and tips that you could do. I honestly suggest just playing around with how all of this works and seeing what works best for your use case. With all of that, I'm going to need a name for this uh, vehicle. Like I said, I'm terrible at naming vehicles. So if you have a name that you think I should call this pink monstrosity that my daughter uh, have has dubbed, as a matter of fact, I'm going to sit here and just... You know, go ahead and leave that in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like. If you like me, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want more videos like this in the future. With all of that, I just want to say thank you and thanks to all the new subscribers that I've gotten in the last geez, month and a half. I know it ain't, a, it ain't like thousands, but seriously, like even, you know, the you hundred of you that have subscribed to me really means a lot. It shows that I am doing something that other people are enjoying and uh, it really helps, uh, really helps kind of like cement that I feel like I am going down a path that I am going to enjoy.